Yeah, we're back again. Um, this time, uh, we will call this an even bigger project because um, I don't know if you guys have seen our fans yet, but you should probably see it. Uh, and I'll, I'll put a link down below um, uh, of how we built the fans. And now um, it's time for a deck. Um, well, you can see how bare um, our outside uh, patio or whatever you call it as is. And they were like, okay, we need a landing area and, you know, um, to clean up uh, our dog's paws or, or, or even a seating area. So uh, we decided to uh, to build a, a deck. Uh, this is going to be a freestanding deck. So there's two versions of a deck. You can either attach it to the house uh, with the ledger board or you could actually uh, make a deck by itself. Like everything is structural from the ground up. You don't have to attach to the house. Uh, in this way, you uh, don't have to um, get your county's permission and or uh, go through a uh, inspection or of that sort. This is only when you don't attach the deck to the house. Um, so we went that way. We don't want to get into complications. Plus, um, we are building it uh, pretty much the way we wanted to, and, and this is our for ever first time ever to to build a deck. Uh, of this size and uh, the, the, the deck size is going to be about 30 by 12 which is pretty much the whole length of the house um, so as you see uh, it's the same thing uh, marking up squares uh, figure out the square first uh, mark a layout of where you want the deck to be and then uh, dig out the holes for the for the posts uh, we actually went with 6 by 6's um, for the post for extra um, structure, um, you can see how huge they are. Um, also, um, as you see, I'm actually notching the six by sixes to attach the the rim joist uh, to sit on it, rather than sitting on the side. I'm literally putting the deck on uh, the top of the the beams. Um, sorry, uh, the posts. So in this way, all the loads directly um, 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 bounced onto the ground. I'm going to pause here for a second. That was our initial um, plan or the way out of the deck and the post. The one with the crosses you could see are the, the, the place where the post is going to be, uh, where the 6 by 6s are going to be. In in between the dotted lines are the joists um, the outside are the rim joists as I explained and that's the measurement we went with um, we changed a little bit here and there but this was our initial plan go ahead and take that uh, if there's any questions please leave me a comment and I'll be happy to explain it um, so yeah the post that's um, going to be closer to the house um, had to be uh, put up first because you have to put that rim joist um, installed to those posts before you go ahead and, and cement those posts because uh, b because you're gonna you, you won't be having any space to to drill um, uh, for the carriage bolts or um, uh, to to tighten the the bolts. We went on we, we went ahead with um, six inch carriage bolts because I would have half inch. Um, uh, a leeway for me to tighten the nuts. Um, the post is going to be five and a half, and this um, the quarter inch six inch carriage bolts uh, with the nut is going to give you super stability. So the next day was to uh, was to demolish the previous um, existing stairs. Um, we had to completely uh, uh, strip it down, and, um, and and we realized it was all rotten underneath it. So we uh, we uh, kind of had to. Uh, pretty much trash it. We uh, we tried to um, re uh, reuse uh, some of them uh, but uh, most of them uh, were were pretty much trash. Um, so uh, we're doing the same thing what we did uh, uh, previously uh, attaching the, the rim joist to the post. Also when you're attaching the rim joist to the post um, uh, try not to um, um, use an impact wrench or, 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 or something that's powerful because um, you're going to strip the, the wood um, um, with the carriage bolt. Um, it's just better to use like a wrench um, uh, to tighten the to the nut 
Um, and after that, it's it's uh, pretty straightforward. You check for squires. You check for level. Um, the way to check for squires um, is pretty basic. Uh, Pythagoras um, theorem. Um, find the hypotenuse, and uh, the square of the hypotenuse um, should be um, equal to the square of the two sides. You're you're checking for reference for the square. Uh, once you know that's accurate. Um, you can go ahead and put those um, uh, rim joists on either sides. You might also notice that uh, uh, we would um, check for squares again um, because we weren't sure before we uh, cemented it. Another way to check for squares is check diagonal. Um, the two diagonal diagonals are are, are the same, uh, and uh, you pretty much uh, did a good job in, in checking squares. Um, we did that and we cemented it and it was uh, it was about about uh, the daylight ended so we brought our laser out and we checked the level it was pretty level I went ahead with, with cementing those things too um, and now it's time for the, the room joist in the very front um, uh, same process as before now well you don't have to worry about putting the carriage bolts first uh, you could go ahead and, and cement the posts uh, we put, I think we uh, went with uh, five feet apart. Our deck was about 30 feet wide, so we went out with six poles. So, um, and then once you have the post in and, and want it um, set for a day, um, we use quick, quick setting cement. You could pretty much um, put on the rim joist in, in a few hours, but we waited a day. And um, the next day, uh, we came back with those. Uh, with those rim joist and, and did the same procedure over again um, two carriage bolts per post um, uh, just make sure you space them uh, apart like I would say um, three inches apart our rim joist was uh, was two by eight um, so you can clearly see what our, what the what we did we we put one um, bolt on the top one bolt on the bottom and it's uh, literally sitting on the post that we notched so um, the weight is uh, um, literally um, going right to the ground um, so there's no active load onto the post uh, so that's one one uh, big um, benefit for notching the post a lot of people don't notch the post uh, but uh, um, back in the days they always did and you know sometimes um, sometimes it's better to just uh, do what people did back then yeah so next day we came out and put some weed barrier. Um, I mean, I know um, I did go ahead and spray for weed, but that's not going to really stop the grass. Um, the weeds will grow no matter what you do. So extra uh, extra protection is always um, always better. So we went ahead and put some weed barrier, and then um, um, I also realized I could I could add some more um, structural. Um, a stability to the deck. I mean, this was not necessary. I went ahead and put a post in between the joists, so I added some four or five, uh, four by fours. Um, you can skip that. Um, you know, um, I just want to be super sure um, that I could take a even a hundred, a hundred, a hundred more people on that deck at once. Um, so I did that. And then you can see after you lay down the weed barrier, uh, it's time for gravel. Um, you need some gravel from to again, uh, one to stop the the weed, two um, to keep the the weed barrier in place, and keep everything level. Um, I mean, to our luck, um, the truck that brought the gravel didn't fit through my um, ten foot gate, and so you had to drop right outside the gate, and I had to. Uh, We'll, we'll barrel it uh, one by one, and that was that was a headache. And I guess um, most people can get away with it, but uh, if you are gonna do it, just make sure uh, you have a way around it, or just get it in the get it in your truck, which which I regretted later on. Um, so once I had everything inside um, or around the deck, I started uh, raking it. Uh, level, just making sure every area has the equal amount of uh, gravel and dust. 
So uh, the next procedure is installing joys as I said earlier. Um, installing joys is, is actually um, uh, a two person job so you you, had, you need to have someone on the other side to hold up the joys on one side and uh, you could probably go ahead and tornail it or, or um, also use joist hanger. In our case we actually um, use joist hangers on either sides. Uh, the joist hangers come with some connector screws. The joist hangers can be attached using nails or connector screws. Um, I'm not a big fan of using nails, so um, we only used uh, the connector screws. Um, it's pretty um, yeah. it's pretty easy if you have uh, two uh, drills or, or drivers. Um, so uh, she would uh, use her driver and um, put up put up the screws on her side, and I would I would go ahead and do on my side. So it was, uh, it was pretty it was pretty quick uh, once you have the joist cut a length. Our deck was. Um, up 12 feet deep and most of the joists are 12 feet some some joists do come up in 12 feet 2 inches 12 feet 3 inches you might have to just cut those 2 or 3 inches sometimes you might be even lucky uh, to not even have to cut anything so one thing to make sure is um, you're putting your joist 16 inches on center um, that's uh, that's code uh, you might want to follow that because you don't know when you sell the house the inspector might check underneath the deck to see if the, if the deck was built uh, to code. Also another thing is uh, check for checking for crowns. Uh, checking for crowns is uh, is when uh, you'll you look at the wood and see where the, the bend is. Usually uh, most of the woods are not straight as you expect it to be. Uh, so uh, when you when you're putting the joists up, you want the crown up, so that um, on the long run, when it, when it starts to take load, it actually bends down there rather than having it inverted and, and constantly buckling in the middle. So uh, just make sure you have the crown up rather than having it down. It's something uh, we learned over the over the days of building uh, the fans and the deck. Um, here, as you as you see, uh, you can see those joist hangers. We came back and uh, installed it. Right now, it's just been toenailed or toe screwed, I would say. Um, also, you would notice those bridges between the joists. Uh, that's again for extra stability. Um, some people do it, some people don't. We went ahead and did it. Um, in this way, you know, people bounce on the deck, jump on the deck, dance on the deck. Um, the joys are not going to move because it's literally, um, you know, bridged together. Um, and also you would notice those uh, bridges on the rim joist. That's for something else. Um, you guys will notice uh, later on. Uh, this will all make sense at the very end when the whole deck is done. Uh, so that's more of a surprise uh, to us and for everyone who is watching this. Also, you would um, notice us using uh, some kind of tape. This is called joist tape, um, also butyl tape. Um, it just acts as a barrier between the, the wood and the deck boards, I mean both woods. But it, it kind of makes um, uh, sure there's no water holding on in between the deck board and the joist. Uh, this is just for extra um, layer of protection. Uh, again, these decks are meant to last for for 15 20 years and uh, say if you put a joist tape and there's no water um that helps rotting um it, this might even go up to 35 40 years yeah that's how it looks after the joist tape um but uh th yeah that's that's kind of an idea of what our uh, picture frame deck is going to look like instead of two we ended up having three faces um yeah, when you start putting up the deck boards, a uh, few things to uh, to note is um, always start at the very end, uh, meaning where your uh, steps is going to be, and then uh, go from there inwards towards the house. And this way, um, when you when you calculate uh, the number of uh, deck boards uh, you you want a, a place, um, you could you could divide the the width of a deck board to the total. Um, uh, depth or width of your deck. In our case, it was about 12 feet. 
and, and each deck board is five and a half inches. I mean, deck boards do vary in size lumber, but it's always between a five and a quarter to a five and a half. So um, as I mentioned, in our case, it was 12 feet. So it's about 140, 45 inches. Um, so you you divide that by five and a half inches. So we came up with about 26 to 27 boards. Uh, but when we ended at the house, uh, we were shy of like three inches. So we had to rip a board. Um, I mean, in this way, it's actually better the ripped board is closer to the house than having it farther away because in a visual perspective uh, your eyes are always going to see at the farther end rather than looking right down when you step out of the house um, so we ended up like ripping the board that's closer to the house um, I mean different people do it differently I know contractors um, try to like close down the gap as much or open up the gap to equate the number of boats to be a whole number, but uh, we wanted the, 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 the gaps to be completely flush. We didn't want any gaps um, between our boats because um, with, with lumber, um, two things, um, during summer it's gonna, it's gonna uh, contract because there's, there's water inside wood. Um, it's, I mean, agree or disagree, it's a living thing. So the water, um, um, evaporates so it contracts and then during winter it it breathes more so it expands so you do you do need a little bit of gap but not a lot of gap also a few things to remember uh, when you put on the deck board um, just make sure each joist gets at least two screws um, on the deck board so you can either pre-drill uh, we went with you know uh, the self-drilling uh, deck screws you can um, uh, you cannot go wrong with either a two and a half inch or a three inch uh, deck screws um, depending on uh, which brand you pick uh, we went with the, the three inch um, deck screws um, the deck boat is about an inch uh, and um, if you want to bury it two inches into the joist, it's 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 better, you know, for a, for a long-standing hold. Um, three inches is a safer bet. You can you can see me. I would I would drill a little bit onto the deck board, and I I'll, I'll follow up um, uh, and follow up by driving it with an impact driver. You know, it's better to have a um, natural drivers. Um, you might also me, uh, notice me using like a lever uh, to help push the board um, closer. Um, so this is like a very uh, traditional way of you know manipulating the deck board because it's wood. You know you have to work around um, the shape and um, the the intricacy of the wood. Um, it's it, it's it's hard. Um, you'll sometimes see me like move. As much as giving me at most force to even bend the wood and then screw it right in so I would um, I would I just took a scrap wood a 2 by 4 you can take a 2 by 4 to two, 3 feet in length have like a, um, a rotating uh, a lever in the middle half drill to screw in and then you can attach that to the joist and then you can put one end to the ground and the other end is gonna be a freestanding so I would use that as a as a lever um, to to push the, the wood closer to the previous deck board. Yeah, that's the puppies enjoying the first side of the, the deck. Um, uh, well, after the first uh, section of the of the deck was done, now we continue doing the the middle section. Uh, from now on, it's just a repetition of what we did in the first section. Uh, so now we got two more sections to go so the first section and then one picture frame second and then the picture frame and then the third and there's a surrounding picture frame for, for the whole deck um, again the same process uh, I'm not gonna bore you here um, two uh, screws per joist um, so out for our section it was about I would say 86 to 87 inches um, as you may remember, the joist is placed 16 inches on center, so it's about um, uh, about six multiplied by two screws, about 12 screws um, per deck board uh, for that particular section. Uh, make sure you actually uh, uh, bury the screws a little bit in so that your feet doesn't feel it when you walk on the deck. 
also um, as I said um, as wood grows in and out the screws are going to try to uh, to come out a bit so if you bury it in like a, a millimeter or two uh, from the so from the surface so even if it pops out a bit it's still going to be under the surface uh, so just keep that in mind um, also with cutting the the whole um, uh, deck board we um, we did not do it in the middle section uh, in the first section you might have noticed we actually did it before uh, we installed the deck boards um, so yeah the first section we uh, we kind of used a combination of both the miter saw and a circular saw well you mesh it out each of the deck board and then um, we cut out each deck board and then um, screw it in but with this uh, middle section we kind of went on another route um, we actually had a, a saw guide which means you could actually uh, lay out all the boards and then after that you just use a saw guide and and and, and make a straight line or you'll see us use it um, after this probably the night very next day um, it's pretty uh, straightforward. It has like two clamps on either side. You just clamp it on and hold it on with a, with, with a bunch of clamps and then you mark it or you could just use your circular saw as a, as a, as a guide to just um, cut it across. Um, as I said, you'll, you'll probably see it uh, when, we, when we're about to cut it. Um, um, also, I did forget to mention before um, that every time I cut a board, I would use a, a, a a paint sealer it's, it's actually called end sealer uh, which means it kind of like stops the wood from rotting um, from external elements like rain or um, or termites so um, it's not a necessity to use it but as I said we are just being safe and because this is the very first time we're doing it we just want to be uh, very careful on whatever we do because um, we don't want any termites um, or rotting um, uh, soon after um, yeah that's right after we um, did that um, straight cut using the saw guide um, sorry that video um, got missed somehow but um, I'll try to explain it um, as much as I could it's pretty much as I said clamp it down and then mark it or just use your circular saw to make a straight cut I'm sure there's plenty of um, YouTube videos you can look up to use a, a saw guide to make a cut um, uh, pretty straightforward um, and after that we laid out our uh, picture frame um, on the inside and then now um, you can see me um, laying out the picture frame on the outside um, so those bridges are for the picture frame for the outside because it won't, doesn't have a joist uh, to, to hold on to so I have to make those bridges in addition to the existing joist um, so um, I would screw I would screw in the the, the rim joy the rim joist is uh, deck boards first and, and and then cut the section uh, to length so each deck boat in our case would about be 86 to 87 inches so we cut that uh, prior to installing it uh, so we would bring that and check if that length is pretty accurate it has to be exactly accurate because um, as I mentioned earlier it's gonna it's gonna shrink over summer and, and, and grow a little bit over winter um, so we want it to be a tight fit. So if it if it's growing a bit, it has that extra um, room to uh, to do so. Um, it's the same um, process. Um, cut. Uh, we we use that sealer um, every time we made a cut, and then uh, pre-drive a little bit, and then place it, and then uh, screw it all all the way in. Um, uh, you could see we made a, a, a temporary uh, a shade with our with our tent. It was so hot. It was I, I think it was probably 125, 130 degrees outside. But we have to finish this. Um, I mean, once you get going, it's the same process. Um, and we we probably did this, and I don't know, uh, from start to finish. I would say uh, three to four weeks. But we didn't work all three to four weeks. We uh, did only on the on the weekends and. Uh, probably uh, in, the, in the early in the mornings and, and right after work in the evenings and that's about it and, and and remember I told you once you get closer to the house and the end of the deck uh, you might have to rip a board in our case it definitely did happen because um, our house wasn't exactly uh, straight so our deck was kind of like 
you know, um, I wouldn't call it a, a perfect squire, but it it, it kind of was. So we had to manipulate um, um, here and there. So we had to rip a board that was like two and a half inches on one side and three inches on another side. So I used my jigsaw to, to make that two and a half to three inches cut, but it kind of worked out. So, um, so technically we were supposed to do a wraparound um, uh, steps for this deck, um, but the, the, the weather wasn't permitting us to do it. So for now, uh, we're just going to do steps right in the middle and then um, uh, probably during winter we're just going to complete uh, steps all around. So I'll probably um, um, make a video for the steps along because um, it, it could get complicated because, you know, um, if you've if you go in the traditional route, people just buy the stringers and, and um, use the stringers as a as a way to just make their stairs or steps. Uh, but uh, we don't want to go that route. We actually uh, wanted to make our own uh, steps. So so we this is called box steps. So you pretty much make um, um, make a wild guess of how deep your uh, uh, tread is going to be and uh, and what height do you want your riser to be. Uh, I'm not going to get too technical. I will explain all the rules in a separate video later on. Um, so these um, steps were built to codes. Um, each state um, does vary with, with codes when you're building uh, steps. Um, and it does vary according to the height of the deck too. In our case, our deck was less than 24 uh, inches from ground. So there are rules like if your deck is um, less than 30 inches, uh, from ground, you don't need rails. Um, also, with, when it comes to steps, um, there's there's few things to be uh, to be um, noted. It's about and the the, the riser height, which is the height that you have to climb on a step, and then the depth of the tread, which is your feet where the feet lands on a step. So that's called the the tread depth. So um, in our in our state, our county, uh, the, the depth was supposed to be uh, nine to eleven inches. Um, I kept it at two deck boards. It was eleven inches, five and a half inches deep as one deck board. So I made I put two deck boards. It was eleven inches, and the riser was supposed to be about between seven to nine inches. So, and I kept it at nine inches, uh, it, which is a safe um, you know um, uh, measurement. Uh, you could go a little here and there, but you have to stick to that code. Uh, but that's about it. That's um, that's the finished deck. Um, we 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 are enjoying it every single day, and you know um, the dogs love it, and we love it. That was our previous plans about where the deck boards are gonna be. Um, I'll throw in all all the codes in. Um, yeah. This is a few things. Uh, this yeah. is me during. Uh, uh, you know, we were having fun. Uh, you could totally uh, uh, see me. Champion.